HI. Let's talk about waves. What are different types of waves? You mean like this? No, no. I'm not talking about the sign language of wave. Huh? What? You want to tell me what are different types of waves? Yes. Okay, I will explain. In physics, mathematics, and related fields, a wave is a disturbance of a field in which a physical attribute oscillates repeatedly at each point or propagates from each point to neighboring points, or seems to move through space. Oh. The waves most commonly studied in physics are mechanical and electromagnetic. Dude, you look similar to me, so how do I know? Ha ha ha. A mechanical wave is a local deformation strain in some physical medium that propagates from particle to particle by creating local stresses that cause strain in neighboring particles too. For example, sound waves in the air are variations of the local pressure that propagate by collisions between gas molecules. Other examples of mechanical waves are seismic waves, gravity waves, vortices, and shock waves. A shock wave is a type of propagating disturbance that moves faster than the local speed of sound in the medium. Like an ordinary wave, a shock wave carries energy and can propagate through a medium but is characterized by an abrupt, nearly discontinuous, change in pressure, temperature, and density of the medium. Wait, is seismic waves are used to travel the Earth's layer because of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, magma movement, Large landslides and large man-made explosions? That's right. Seismic waves are waves of energy that travel through the Earth's layers, and are a result of earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, magma movement, large landslides and large man-made explosions that give out low-frequency acoustic energy. Many other natural and anthropogenic sources create low-amplitude waves commonly referred to as ambient vibrations. Seismic waves are studied by geophysicists called seismologists. Seismic wave fields are recorded by a seismometer, hydrophone in water, or accelerometer. What about gravity waves and surface waves? Gravity waves are waves generated in a fluid medium or at the interface between two media when the force of gravity or buoyancy tries to restore equilibrium. An example of such an interface is that between the atmosphere and the ocean, which gives rise to wind waves. A surface wave is a 90 degree wave that propagates along the interface between differing media. A common example is gravity waves along the surface of liquids such as ocean waves and the electromagnetic wave an electromagnetic wave consists of a combination of variable electric and magnetic fields that propagates through space according to Maxwell's equations electromagnetic waves can travel through suitable dielectric media or through vacuum examples include radio waves infrared radiation visible light ultraviolet radiation x-rays and gamma rays and maybe even cosmic rays but what other types of waves? Other types of waves include gravitational waves, which are disturbances in a gravitational field that propagate according to general relativity. Heat diffusion waves. Plasma waves, that combine mechanical deformations and electromagnetic fields. Reaction diffusion waves, such as in the Belus or Jabotinsky reaction and many more. Waves in plasmas are an interconnected set of particles and fields which propagate in a periodically repeating fashion. A plasma is a quasi-neutral, electrically conductive fluid. Wind waves, or wind-generated waves, are surface waves that occur on the free surface of bodies of water like oceans, seas, lakes, rivers, canals, puddles or ponds. They result from the wind blowing over an area of fluid surface. Waves in the oceans can travel thousands of miles before reaching land. When waves on Earth range in size from small ripples, to waves over 100 feet, or 30 meters high. Hold up. Is radio waves is used for lightning? As usual, you are right. Radio wave is used for lighting. Radio wave dangers are cancer leukemia and other diseases. Radio waves are the longest wavelength and lowest frequency. Radio waves have the lowest temperature. Radio waves facts are radio waves have the violet color and it goes up to 100 megameters to 10 meters. Radio waves have frequencies as high as 300 gigahertz to as low as 30 hertz or lower. It includes UHF radio waves, VHF radio waves, HF radio waves, LF radio waves, ELF radio waves, ultrasonic waves, and acoustic waves. U is UHF sounds for ultra-high frequency, 
the HF stands for very high frequency, HF stands for high frequency, LF stands for ultra low frequency, and ELF stands for extremely low frequency? Yes, Iggy Koopa that is absolutely correct. HF radio waves can have a wavelength of 124 millimeters and have a frequency of 2.42 gigahertz having the energy of 10 microelectron volts. VHF radio waves can have a wavelength of 1.24 meters and have a frequency of 242 megahertz, having the energy of 1 microelectron volt. HF radio waves can have a wavelength of 12.4 meters and have a frequency of 24.2 megahertz, having the energy of 100 nanoelectron volts. LF radio waves can have a wavelength of 124 meters and have a frequency of 2.42 megahertz. ELF radio waves can have a wavelength of 1.24 meters and have a frequency of 242 kilohertz, having the energy of 10 nanoelectron volts. Ultrasonic waves can have a wavelength of 124 meters to 12.4 kilometers and have a frequency of 2.42 megahertz to 24.2 kilohertz, having the energy of 100 picoelectron volts to 10 nanoelectron volts. Acoustic waves can have a wavelength of 12.4 kilometers to 12.4 megameters and have a frequency of 24.2 kilohertz to 24.2 hertz having the energy of 100 femtoelectron volts to 100 picoelectron volts. At 300 gigahertz, the corresponding wavelength is 1 millimeter, and at 30 hertz is 10,000 kilometers. Like all other electromagnetic waves, radio waves travel at the speed of light. They are generated by electric charges undergoing acceleration, such as time-varying electric currents. Radio waves are generated artificially by transmitters and received by radio receivers, Using antennas, radio waves are very widely used in modern technology for fixed and mobile radio communication, broadcasting, radar and other navigation systems, communication satellites, wireless computer networks and many other applications. Radio waves were first predicted by mathematical work done in 1867 by British mathematical physicist James Clerk Maxwell. Wait, does radio waves discovered in 1867? Wrong. Radio waves are actually discovered in the 1870s. Maxwell noticed wave-like properties of light and similarities in electrical and magnetic observations. His mathematical theory, now called Maxwell's equations, described light waves and radio waves as waves of electromagnetism that travel in space, radiated by a charged particle as it undergoes acceleration. In 1887, Heinrich Hertz demonstrated the reality of Maxwell's electromagnetic waves by experimentally generating radio waves in this laboratory, showing that they exhibited the same wave properties as light, standing waves, refraction, diffraction, and polarization. Radio waves, originally called Hertzian waves, were first used for communication in the mid-1890s by Guglielmo Marconi who developed the first practical radio transmitters and receivers. The modern term radio wave replaced the original name Hertzian wave around 1912. Is microwaves are used for cooking? Yep. Microwaves is used for cooking. Microwaves danger is ovens. Microwaves have the second lowest frequency and the next longest frequency. Microwaves are a form of electromagnetic radiation with wavelengths ranging from about 1 meter to 1 millimeter with frequencies between 300 megahertz and 300 gigahertz, having the energy of 10 microelectron volts to 100 microelectron volts. If How about radar waves? Belonging to a microwave, a radar wave is a wave that determines the range, angle, or velocity of objects. It can be used to detect aircraft, ships, spacecraft, guided missiles, motor vehicles, weather formations, and terrain. It can go up to 24.2 gigahertz and having a wavelength up to 12.4 millimeters, having the energy of 10 microelectron volts. Microwaves facts are microwaves have the second coldest temperature and it goes up to 100 centimeters 1 meter to 10 millimeters 1 centimeter. Microwaves travel by line of sight. Unlike lower frequency radio waves they do not diffract around hills, follow the Earth's surface as ground waves, or reflect from the ionosphere. So terrestrial microwave communication links are limited by the visual horizon to about 40 miles, or 64 kilometers. At the high end of the band they are absorbed by gases in the atmosphere, limiting practical communication distances to around a kilometer. Microwaves are widely used in modern technology, for example in point-to-point -point communication links, wireless networks, microwave radio relay networks, radar, 
satellite and spacecraft communication, medical diathermy and cancer treatment, remote sensing, radio astronomy, particle accelerators, spectroscopy, industrial heating, collision avoidance systems, garage door openers and keyless entry systems, and for cooking food in microwave ovens. Microwaves were first generated in the 1880s and 1890s in some of the earliest radio experiments by physicists who thought of them as a form of invisible light. James Clerk Maxwell in his 1873 theory of electromagnetism, now called Maxwell's equations, had predicted the existence of electromagnetic waves and proposed that light was composed of these waves. In 1888, German physicist Heinrich Hertz was the first to demonstrate the existence of radio waves using a primitive spark gap radio transmitter. Hertz and the other early radio researchers were interested in exploring the similarities between radio waves and light waves. To test Maxwell's theory, they concentrated on producing short wavelength radio waves in the UHF and microwave ranges with which they could duplicate classic optics experiments, using quasi-optical components such as prisms and lenses made of paraffin, sulfur and pitch and wire diffraction gratings, to refract and diffract radio waves like light rays. Hertz produced waves up to 450 mHz. His directional 450 mHz transmitter consisted of a 26 cm brass rod dipole antenna with a spark gap between the ends suspended at the focal line of a parabolic antenna made of a curved zinc sheet, powered by high voltage pulses from an induction coil. His historic experiments demonstrated that radio waves like light exhibited refraction, diffraction, polarization, interference and standing waves proving that radio waves and light waves were both forms of Maxwell's electromagnetic waves. But how about infrared light? Infrared. Infrared is for LED, which stands for light emitting diode. Infrared danger is the radiation. Infrared have the third lowest frequency and have the next longest wavelength. It extend from the nominal red edge of the visible spectrum at 700 nanometers with a frequency of 430 terahertz to 1 millimeter with a frequency of 300 gigahertz having the energy of 100 milli electron volts to 1 electron volt. Now, in electrocardiography, the T wave represents the repolarization of the ventricles. The interval from the beginning of the QRS complex to the apex of the T wave is referred to as the absolute refractory period. T waves can have a range of 242 GHz to 24.2 terahertz and have a wavelength of 1.24 mm to 12.4 micrometers having the energy of 1 milli electron volt to 100 milli electron volts. In addition to Hertz, it includes far IR and near IR waves. Far IR waves can go to 25.2 terahertz and have a wavelength of 12.4 micrometers. Near IR waves can go to 242 terahertz and have a wavelength of 1.24 micrometers. Most of the thermal radiation emitted by objects near room temperature is infrared. As with all EMR, IR carries radiant energy and behaves both like a wave and like its quantum particle, the photon. Infrared facts are infrared waves have the next coldest temperature and it goes up to 1000 micrometers 1 millimeter to 10 micrometers or less. Infrared radiation was discovered in 1800 by astronomer Sir William Herschel, who discovered a type of invisible radiation in the spectrum lower in energy than red light, by means of its effect on a thermometer. Infrared radiation is used in industrial scientific, military, law enforcement, and medical applications. Night vision devices using active near-infrared illumination allow people or animals to be observed without the observer being detected. Infrared astronomy uses sensor-equipped telescopes to penetrate dusty regions of space such as molecular clouds, detect objects such as planets, and to view highly red-shifted objects from the early days of the universe. Infrared thermal imaging cameras are used to detect heat loss in insulated systems to observe changing blood flow in the skin, and to detect overheating of electrical apparatus. Extensive uses for military and civilian applications include target acquisition, surveillance, night vision, homing, and tracking. Humans at normal body temperature radiate chiefly at wavelengths around 10 micrometers. Non-military uses include thermal efficiency analysis, environmental monitoring, industrial facility inspections, detection of grow-ups, remote temperature sensing, short-range wireless communication, spectroscopy, and weather forecasting. The discovery of infrared radiation is ascribed to William Herschel, the astronomer, 
In the early 19th century, Herschel published his results in 1800 before the Royal Society of London. Herschel used a prism to refract light from the sun and detected the infrared, beyond the red part of the spectrum, through an increase in the temperature recorded on a thermometer. He was surprised at the result and called them calorific rays. The term infrared did not appear until late 19th century. Visible light. Hold up. Does visible light consist of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet wavelengths? Particularity, you are right. Light. Visible light is used F or light. Visible light danger is the blue-violet light. Visible light has the fourth lowest frequency and can up to 10,000 Kelvin. This wavelength means a frequency range of roughly 430 to 750 terahertz having the energy of one electron volt. Visible light facts are the visible light have the colors called Roigbevand. It goes up to 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers but it goes to one micrometer. Wow! Roy G. Biv is just like a rainbow. Exactly. The word usually refers to visible light, which is the visible spectrum that is visible to the human eye and is responsible for the sense of sight. The primary properties of visible light are intensity, propagation direction, frequency or wavelength spectrum, and polarization, while at speed in a vacuum, 299,792,458 meters per second, is one of the fundamental constants of nature. In the 13th century, Roger Bacon theorized that rainbows were produced by a similar process to the passage of light through glass or crystal. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton discovered that prisms could disassemble and reassemble white light and described the phenomenon in his book Optics. He was the first to use the word spectrum Latin for appearance or apparition in this sense in print in 1671 inches describing his experiments in optics. Newton observed that, when a narrow beam of sunlight strikes the face of a glass prism at an angle, some is reflected and some of the beam passes into and through the glass, emerging as different colored bands. Newton hypothesized light to be made up of corpuscles particles of different colors, with the different colors of light moving at different speeds in transparent matter, red light moving more quickly than violet in glass. The result is that red light is bent refracted less sharply than violet as it passes through the prism, creating a spectrum of colors. Newton originally divided the spectrum into six named colors, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. He later added indigo as the seventh color since he believed that seven was a perfect number as derived from the ancient Greek sophists of there being a connection between the colors, the musical notes, the known objects in the solar system, and the days of the week. The human eye is relatively insensitive to indigo's frequencies, and some people who have otherwise good vision cannot distinguish indigo from blue and violet. For this reason, some later commentators, including Isaac Asimov, have suggested that indigo should not be regarded as a color in its own right but merely as a shade of blue or violet. Evidence indicates that what Newton meant by indigo and blue does not correspond to the modern meanings of those color words. Comparing Newton's observation of prismatic colors to a color image of the visible light spectrum shows that indigo corresponds to what is today called blue, whereas blue corresponds to cyan. In the 18th century, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe wrote about optical spectra in his theory of colors. Goethe used the word spectrum spectrum to designate a ghostly optical aftermage, as did Schopenhauer in On Vision and Colors. Goethe argued that the continuous spectrum was a compound phenomena. Where Newton narrowed the beam of light to isolate the phenomena, Goethe observed that a wider aperture produces not a spectrum but rather reddish yellow and blue cyan edges with white between them. The spectrum appears only when these edges are close enough to overlap. In the early 19th century, the concept of the visible spectrum became more definite, as light outside the visible range was discovered and characterized by William Herschel Infrared and Johann Wilhelm Ritter Ultraviolet, Thomas Young, Thomas Johann Seebeck and others. Young was the first to measure the wavelengths of different colors of light, in 1802. The connection between the visible spectrum and color vision was explored by Thomas Young and Hermann von Helmholtz in the early 19th century. Their theory of color vision correctly proposed that the eye uses three distinct receptors to perceive color. Visible light, as with all types of electromagnetic radiation, is experimentally found to always move at this speed in a vacuum. Plant growth is also affected by the color spectrum of light, 
a process known as photomorphogenesis. Photomorphogenesis is light-mediated development, where plant growth patterns respond to the light spectrum. This is a completely separate process from photosynthesis where light is used as a source of energy. Phytochromes, cryptochromes, and phototropins are photochromic sensory receptors that restrict the photomorphogenic effect of light to the UVA, UVB, blue and red portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. The photomorphogenesis of plants is often studied by using tightly frequency-controlled light sources to grow the plants. There are at least three stages of plant development where photomorphogenesis occurs, seed germination, seedling development, and the switch from the vegetative to the flowering stage. Most research on photomorphogenesis comes from plants. So the wavelengths of each color Red wavelength have a wavelength of 665 nanometers. Orange wavelength have a wavelength of 630 nanometers. Yellow wavelength have a wavelength of 600 nanometers. Green wavelength have a wavelength of 550 nanometers. Blue wavelength have a wavelength of 470 nanometers. Indigo wavelength have a wavelength of 425 nanometers. Violet wavelength have a wavelength of 400 nanometers. So is ultraviolet used for purification? You are right. Ultraviolet is used for purification. Ultraviolet danger is the sunburn. Ultraviolet has the fifth lowest frequency and can between 400 to 10 nanometers. Near UV can go to 242 terahertz and have a wavelength of 1.24 micrometers, having the energy of 1 milli electron volt. Far UV can go to 2.42 petahertz and have a wavelength of 124 nanometers having the energy of 10 electron volts. Extreme UV can go to 24.2 petahertz and have a wavelength of 12.4 nanometers, having the energy of 100 electron volts. Ultraviolet facts or ultraviolet goes up to 1 micrometer. Ultraviolet radiation is present in sunlight and contributes about 10% of the total light output of the sun. It is also produced by electric arcs and specialized lights, such as mercury vapor lamps, tanning lamps, and black lights. Although long wavelength ultraviolet is not considered an ionizing radiation because its photons lack the energy to ionize atoms, it can cause chemical reactions and causes many substances to glow or fluoresce. Consequently, the chemical and biological effects of UV are greater than simple heating effects, and many practical applications of UV radiation derive from its interactions with organic molecules. Ultraviolet means beyond violet from Latin ultra meaning beyond. Violet being the color of the highest frequencies of visible light. Ultraviolet has a higher frequency and thus a shorter wavelength than violet light. It was discovered in 1801 when the German physicist Johann Wilhelm Ritter observed that invisible rays just beyond the violet end of the visible spectrum darken silver chloride soaked paper more quickly than violet light itself. He called them oxidizing rays to emphasize chemical reactivity and to distinguish them from heat rays discovered the previous year at the other end of the visible spectrum. So, X-rays. does the X-rays are used to see your bones? Absolutely. X-rays is used for X-rays. X-ray danger is radiation exposure. X-rays has the sixth lowest frequency and can be made up to 1 million Kelvin. X-ray facts are X-rays has the orange color and it goes up to 10 nanometers to 100 picometers, having the energy of 1 kilo electron volt to 10 kilo electron volts corresponding to frequencies in the range 30 petahertz to 30 exahertz and energies in the range 100 electron volts to 100 kilo electron volts. Soft X-rays can go to 24.2 petahertz and have a wavelength of 12.4 nanometers and hard X-rays can go to 24.2 exahertz and have a wavelength of 12.4 picometers having the energy of 100 electron volts to 1 kilo electron volt and 10 kilo electron volts to 100 kilo electron volts respectively. X-ray wavelengths are shorter than those of UV rays and typically longer than those of gamma rays. Before their discovery in 1895 X-rays were just a type of unidentified radiation emanating from experimental discharge tubes. They were noticed by scientists investigating cathode rays produced by such tubes which are energetic electron beams that were first observed in 1869. Many of the early Crookes tubes, which were invented around 1875, undoubtedly radiated X-rays, because early researchers noticed effects that were attributable to them, 
as detailed below. Crookes tubes created free electrons by ionization of the residual air in the tube by a high DC voltage of anywhere between a few kilovolts and 100 kilovolts. This voltage accelerated the electrons coming from the cathode to a high enough velocity that they created X-rays when they struck the anode or the glass wall of the tube. On November 8, 1895, German physics professor Wilhelm Rtgen stumbled on X-rays while experimenting with Leonard tubes and Crookes tubes and began studying them. In many languages, X-radiation is referred to with terms meaning Rtgen radiation, after the German scientist Wilhelm Rtgen who discovered these on November 8, 1895, who usually is credited as its discoverer and who named it X-radiation to signify an unknown type of radiation. Gamma so, rays. is gamma rays used for medicine? Correct. Gamma rays is used for medicine. Gamma rays danger is the radiotherapy. Gamma rays has the second shortest wavelength and the second highest frequency that was greater than 10 exahertz, having the energy of 1 mega electron volt to 1 giga electron volt. Gamma rays facts are gamma rays have the second highest and hottest temperature. It can go up to 1 billion Kelvin and it goes up from 10 picometers to 1 femtometer. Wait, so gamma waves are the second highest frequency and the second shortest wavelength? Yep. Oh stop bluffing. No, it was true. It is a penetrating electromagnetic radiation arising from the radioactive decay of atomic nuclei. It consists of the shortest wavelength electromagnetic waves, called cosmic rays. Paul Villard, a French chemist and physicist discovered gamma radiation in 1900 while studying radiation emitted by radium. In 1903, Ernest Rutherford named this radiation gamma rays based on their relatively strong penetration of matter. He had previously discovered two less penetrating types of decay radiation, which he named alpha rays and beta rays in ascending order of penetrating power. Gamma rays from radioactive decay are in the energy range from a few kiloelectron volts to approximately 8 megaltron volts corresponding to the typical energy levels in nuclei with reasonably long lifetimes. Natural sources of gamma rays include gamma decay from naturally occurring radioisotopes such as potassium-40, and also as a secondary radiation from atmospheric interactions with cosmic ray particles. Exotic astrophysical processes will also produce gamma rays. Mega electron volt is the same as 1 million electron volts. The energy spectrum of gamma rays can be used to identify the decaying radionuclides using gamma spectroscopy. Very high energy gamma rays in the 100 to 1000 tera electron volt. Tera electron volt is the same as 1 trillion electron volts. Natural sources of gamma Gamma rays originating on Earth are mostly as a result of radioactive decay and secondary radiation from atmospheric interactions with cosmic ray particles. However, there are other rare natural sources, such as terrestrial gamma ray flashes, which produce gamma rays from electron action upon the nucleus. Notable artificial sources of gamma rays include fission, such as that which occurs in nuclear reactors, and high-energy physics experiments such as neutral pion decay and nuclear fusion. Gamma rays are ionizing radiation and are thus biologically hazardous. Due to their high penetration power, they can damage bone marrow and internal organs. Unlike alpha and beta rays, they pass easily through the body and thus pose a formidable radiation protection challenge, requiring shielding made from dense materials such as lead or concrete. The first gamma ray source to be discovered was the radioactive decay process called gamma decay. In this type of decay, unexcited nucleus emits a gamma ray almost immediately upon formation. Paul Villard, a French chemist and physicist, discovered gamma radiation in 1900, while studying radiation emitted by radium. In 1903, Ernest Rutherford named this radiation gamma rays based on their relatively strong penetration of matter. He had previously discovered two less penetrating types of decay radiation, which he named alpha rays and beta rays in ascending order of penetrating power. Gamma rays from radioactive decay are in the energy range from a few kiloelectron volts to approximately 8 megaltron volts corresponding to the typical energy levels in nuclei with reasonably long lifetimes. Natural sources of gamma rays include gamma decay from naturally occurring radioisotopes such as potassium-40, 
and also as a secondary radiation from atmospheric interactions with cosmic ray particles. Exotic astrophysical processes will also produce gamma rays. Mega electron volt is the same as 1 million electron volts. The energy spectrum of gamma rays can be used to identify the decaying radionuclides using gamma spectroscopy. Very high energy gamma rays in the 100 to 1000 tera electron volt. Tera electron volt is the same as 1 trillion electron volts. Natural sources of gamma Gamma rays originating on Earth are mostly as a result of radioactive decay and secondary radiation from atmospheric interactions with cosmic ray particles. However, there are other rare natural sources, such as terrestrial gamma ray flashes, which produce gamma rays from electron action upon the nucleus. Notable artificial sources of gamma rays include fission, such as that which occurs in nuclear reactors, and high-energy physics experiments such as neutral pion decay and nuclear fusion. Gamma rays are ionizing radiation and are thus biologically hazardous. Due to their high penetration power, they can damage bone marrow and internal organs. Unlike alpha and beta rays, they pass easily through the body and thus pose a formidable radiation protection challenge, requiring shielding made from dense materials such as lead or concrete. The first gamma ray source to be discovered was the radioactive decay process called gamma decay. In this type of decay, unexcited nucleus emits a gamma ray almost immediately upon formation. Paul Villard, a French chemist and physicist, discovered gamma radiation in 1900, while studying radiation emitted from radium. Villard's radiation was named gamma rays by Ernest Rutherford in 1903. If the annihilating electron and positron are at rest, each of the resulting gamma rays has an energy of about 511 kilo electron volts and frequency of about 124 quintillion hertz. The most intense sources of gamma rays are also the most intense sources of any type of electromagnetic radiation presently known. They are the long duration burst sources of gamma rays in astronomy, and they are rare compared with the sources discussed above. By contrast, short gamma ray bursts of two seconds or less, which are not associated with supernovae, are thought to produce gamma rays during the collision of pairs of neutron stars, or a neutron star and a black hole. The so-called long-duration gamma ray bursts produce a total energy output of about 100 tredecillion joules. Cosmic rays as a radiation of extremely high frequency and penetrating power that originates in outer space and consists partly of high-energy atomic nuclei. Cosmic ray facts are cosmic rays have the highest frequency from 300 exahertz to 300 zetaers or more and the shortest wavelength from 1 picometer to 1 femtometer having the energy of 1 giga electron volt to 100 pita electron volts. The term ray is somewhat of a misnomer due to a historical accident, as cosmic rays were at first, and wrongly, thought to be mostly electromagnetic radiation. Even though gamma rays have the highest frequency and the shortest wavelength, there could be high and ultra high energy cosmic rays that could have a much shorter wavelength and a much higher frequency than that. High energy cosmic rays can go to 242 zenahertz to 2.42 okhertz and have a wavelength of 1.24 yachtometers to 124 zenometers and ultra high energy cosmic rays can go to 24.2 okhertz to 242 okhertz and have a wavelength of 12.4 zenometers to 1.24 zenometers having the energy of 1 iksha electron volt to 10 iksha electron volts and 100 iksha electron volts to 1 zeta electron volt respectively. In Wait, I thought gamma rays had the shortest wavelength and the highest frequency. Nah. Cosmic rays had the shortest wavelength and the highest frequency. Common scientific usage, high energy particles with intrinsic mass are known as cosmic rays, while photons which are quanta of electromagnetic radiation and so have no intrinsic mass are known by their common names, such as gamma rays or X-rays, depending on their photon energy. After the discovery of radioactivity by Henry Becquerel in 1896, it was generally believed that atmospheric electricity, ionization of the air, was caused only by radiation from radioactive elements in the ground or the radioactive gases or isotopes of radon they produce. Measurements of increasing ionization rates at increasing heights above the ground during the decade from 1900 to 1910 could be explained as due to absorption of the ionizing radiation by the intervening air. In 1909, Theodore Wolff developed an electrometer, a device to measure the rate of ion production inside a hermetically sealed container and used it to show higher levels of radiation at the top of the Eiffel Tower than at its base. However, his paper published in Physical Zeitschrift was not widely accepted. In 1911, 
Domenico Pacini observed simultaneous variations of the rate of ionization over a lake, over the sea, and at a depth of 3 meters from the surface. Pacini concluded from the decrease of radioactivity underwater that a certain part of the ionization must be due to sources other than the radioactivity of the Earth. In 1912, Victor Hess carried three enhanced accuracy Wolf electrometers to an altitude of 5,300 meters in a free balloon flight. All of these make sound waves. Sound waves. The waveform of a signal is the shape of its graph as a function of time, independent of its time and magnitude scales and of any displacement in time. In electronics, the term is usually applied to periodically varying voltages, currents, or electromagnetic fields. In acoustics, it is usually applied to steady periodic sounds, variations of pressure in air or other media. In these cases, the waveform is an attribute that is independent of the frequency, amplitude, or phase shift of the signal. The term can also be used for non-periodic signals, like chirps and pulses. The waveform of an electrical signal can be visualized in an oscilloscope or any other device that can capture and plot its value at various times with the suitable scales in the time and value axes. The electrocardiograph is a medical device to record the waveform of the electric signals that are associated with the beating of the heart. That waveform has important diagnostic value. Waveform generators, that can output a periodic voltage or current with one of several waveforms, are a common tool in electronics laboratories and workshops. The waveform of a steady periodic sound affects its timbre. Synthesizers and modern keyboards can generate sounds with many complicated waveforms. This looks like the teeth of a saw, found often in time basis for display scanning. It is used as the starting point for subtractive synthesis, as a sawtooth wave of constant period contains odd and even harmonics that decrease at minus 6 decibels octave. It, it contains four different types of waves. Sine wine, sawtooth wave, triangle wave, and a square wave. A sine wave or sinusoid is a mathematical curve that describes a smooth periodic oscillation. A sine wave is a continuous wave. It is named after the function sine, of which it is the graph. It occurs often in pure and applied mathematics, as well as physics, engineering, signal processing and many other fields. The sine wave is important in physics because it retains its wave shape when added to another sine wave of the same frequency and arbitrary phase and magnitude. It is the only periodic waveform that has this property. This property leads to its importance in Fourier analysis and makes it acoustically unique. A plane wave is a special case of wave or field, a physical quantity whose value, at any moment, is constant over any plane that is perpendicular to a fixed direction in space. A standing wave, also known as a stationary wave, is a wave that remains in a constant position. This phenomenon can occur because the medium is moving in the opposite direction to the wave, or it can arise in a stationary medium as a result of interference between two waves traveling in opposite directions. A mechanical wave is a wave that is an oscillation of matter and therefore transfers energy through a medium. While waves can move over long distances, the movement of the medium of transmission the material is limited. Therefore, the oscillating material does not move far from its initial equilibrium position. Mechanical waves transport energy. This energy propagates in the same direction as the wave. Any kind of wave mechanical or electromagnetic has a certain energy. Mechanical waves can be produced only in media which possess elasticity and inertia. A mechanical wave requires an initial energy input. Once this initial energy is added, the wave travels through the medium until all its energy is transferred. In contrast, Electromagnetic waves require no medium, but can still travel through one. One important property of mechanical waves is that their amplitudes are measured in an unusual way, displacement divided by reduced wavelength. When this gets comparable to unity, significant nonlinear effects such as harmonic generation may occur, and, if large enough, may result in chaotic effects. For example, waves on the surface of a body of water break when this dimensionless amplitude exceeds one resulting in a foam on the surface and turbulent mixing. Some of the most common examples of mechanical waves are water waves, sound waves, and seismic waves. Water waves are surface waves, a mixture of longitudinal and transverse waves. A transverse wave is a moving wave whose oscillations are perpendicular right angle to the direction of the wave. Longitudinal waves are waves in which the displacement of the medium is in the same direction as, or the opposite direction to the direction of propagation of the wave. Mechanical longitudinal waves are also called compressionalic compression waves, 
because they produce compression and rarefaction when traveling through a medium, and pressure waves, because they produce increases and decreases in pressure. The other main type of wave is the transverse wave, in which the displacements of the medium are at right angles to the direction of propagation. Some transverse waves are mechanical, meaning that the wave needs an elastic medium to travel through. Transverse mechanical waves are also called shear waves that appears in earthquakes. S waves, secondary waves, or shear waves sometimes called an elastic S wave are a type of elastic wave and are one of the two main types of elastic body waves, so named because they move through the body of an object, unlike surface waves. A P wave is one of the two main types of elastic body waves, called seismic waves in seismology. P waves travel faster than other seismic waves and hence are the first signal from an earthquake to arrive at any affected location or at a seismograph. P waves may be transmitted through gases, liquids, or solids. Body waves travel through the interior of the earth along paths controlled by the material properties in terms of density and modulus stiffness. Rayla waves are a type of surface acoustic wave that travel along the surface of solids. They can be produced in materials in many ways, such as by a localized impact or by piezoelectric transduction and are frequently used in non-destructive testing for detecting defects. Rayla waves are part of the seismic waves that are produced on the Earth by earthquakes. LAM waves propagate in solid plates. They are elastic waves whose particle motion lies in the plane that contains the direction of wave propagation and the plate normal the direction perpendicular to the plate. In 1917, the English mathematician Horace Lamb published his classic analysis and description of acoustic waves of this type. Their properties turned out to be quite complex. An infinite medium supports just two wave modes traveling at unique velocities. But plates support two infinite sets of Lamb wave modes, whose velocities depend on the relationship between wavelength and plate thickness. Since the 1990s, the understanding and utilization of Lamb waves has advanced greatly thanks to the rapid increase in the availability of computing power. Lamb's theoretical formulations have found substantial practical application, especially in the field of non-destructive testing. The term Rayleigh Lamb waves embraces the Rayleigh wave, a type of wave that propagates along a single surface. Both Rayleigh and Lamb waves are constrained by the elastic properties of the surface S that guide them. A Stonelli wave is a type of boundary wave or interface wave that propagates along a solid fluid boundary or under specific conditions, also along a solid-solid boundary. Amplitudes of Stonelli waves have their maximum values at the boundary between the two contacting media and decay exponentially towards the depth of each of them. These waves can be generated along the walls of a fluid-filled borehole, being an important source of coherent noise in VSPs and making up the low-frequency component of the source in sonic logging. By acronym, Longitudinal waves and transverse waves were occasionally abbreviated by some authors as L waves and T waves respectively for their own convenience. These kinds of waves all appear in earthquakes. A square wave is a non-sinusoidal periodic waveform in which the amplitude alternates at a steady frequency between fixed minimum and maximum values, with the same duration at minimum and maximum. Although not realizable in physical systems. The transition between minimum and maximum is instantaneous for an ideal square wave. The square wave is a special case of a pulse wave which allows arbitrary durations at minimum and maximum. The ratio of the high period to the total period of a pulse wave is called the duty cycle. A true square wave has a 50% duty cycle equal high and low periods. Square waves are often encountered in electronics and signal processing. Its stochastic counterpart is a two-state trajectory. A triangle wave is a non sinusoidal waveform named for its triangular shape. It is a periodic, piecewise linear, continuous real function. Like a square wave, the triangle wave contains only odd harmonics. However, the higher harmonics roll off much faster than in a square wave proportional to the inverse square of the harmonic number as opposed to just the inverse. The sawtooth wave or saw wave is a kind of non-sinusoidal waveform. It is so named based on its resemblance to the teeth of a plain toothed saw with a zero rake angle. The convention is that a sawtooth wave ramps upward and then sharply drops. However, in a reverse or inverse sawtooth wave, the wave ramps downward and then sharply rises. It can also be considered the extreme case of an asymmetric triangle wave. While a square wave is constructed from only odd harmonics, a sawtooth wave sound is harsh and clear and its spectrum contains both even and odd harmonics of the fundamental frequency. Because it contains all the integer harmonics, 
it is one of the best waveforms to use for subtractive synthesis of musical sounds, particularly bowed string instruments like violins and cellos, since the slipstick behavior of the bow drives the strings with a sawtooth-like motion. Sometimes, it have a pulse wave. A pulse wave or pulse train is a kind of non-sinusoidal waveform that includes square waves duty cycle of 50% and similarly periodic but asymmetrical waves duty cycles other than 50%. It is a term common to synthesizer programming, and is a typical waveform available on many synthesizers. The exact shape of the wave is determined by the duty cycle of the oscillator. In many synthesizers, the duty cycle can be modulated sometimes called pulse width modulation for a more dynamic timber. The pulse wave is also known as the rectangular wave, the periodic version of the rectangular function. The average level of a rectangular wave is also given by the duty cycle. Therefore by varying the on and off periods and then averaging the said periods, it is possible to represent any value between the two limiting levels. This is the basis of pulse width modulation. These are audio waves. Sound can propagate through a medium such as air, water and solids as longitudinal waves and also as a transverse wave in solids. The sound waves are generated by a sound source, such as the vibrating diaphragm of a stereo speaker. In addition to this, Sound waves are a type of longitudinal waves that propagate by means of adiabatic compression and decompression. Longitudinal waves are waves that have the same direction of vibration as their direction of travel. Important quantities for describing acoustic waves are sound pressure, particle velocity, particle displacement and sound intensity. Acoustic waves travel with the speed of sound which depends on the medium they're passing through. Speaking of waves, all of them have wavelengths. Wavelengths? Yep. In physics, the wavelength is the spatial period of a periodic wave the distance over which the wave shape repeats. It is thus the inverse of the spatial frequency. Wavelength is usually determined by considering the distance between consecutive corresponding points of the same phase, such as crests, troughs, or zero crossings and is a characteristic of both traveling waves and standing waves as well as other spatial wave patterns. Wavelength is commonly designated by the Greek letter, lambda. The term wavelength is also sometimes applied to modulated waves, and to the sinusoidal envelopes of modulated waves or waves formed by interference of several sinusoids. Wavelength is a measure of the distance between repetitions of a shape feature such as peaks, valleys, or zero crossings, not a measure of how far any given particle moves. For example, in sinusoidal waves over deep water a particle near the water's surface moves in a circle of the same diameter as the wave height, unrelated to wavelength. The speed of light is 299,792,458 meters, approximately 300 million meters. In addition to this, sound travels at a very meager speed of only 343 meters per second. Another term used to describe a wave is frequency. Since waves are moving. We define frequency as the number of waves that pass a given point in a specified unit of time. The unit commonly used is hertz which is the number of wave cycles pass a point in one second. So, a wavelength is defined as from one crust to another crust and it doesn't stop? Yep. A wavelength consists of a crust, and a trot. 